Hi, I'm Daz. Well, there's a pile of bits on my bench, which is not how I normally start a video, but this is a Decker Diadem AMFM. I think I've had it for a while. It's been laying on a shelf. I found it. I wouldn't be surprised if it's been sitting on the shelf for four or five years, but it looks like I actually did start some work with it. Interesting, I've changed one capacitor from what I can see, and I can see I kept the capacitor. It's dated August 65. I noticed there's also some notes with it. Uh, Decca TP86 and TP85, so I don't know which model it's based on um, at this moment, but I seem to remember getting so far with it and then popping it back in the case and the radio then stopped working and uh, I don't know why it doesn't work when it's in the case so your guess is as good as mine why it doesn't work but I think I ought to finish recapping this well here's the circuit board in close up when I got this somebody has already replaced all the AF117s etc so that's a good thing um, look like there's AF126s in there so they should be better here's all the wiring it's got a tape socket a headphone socket and a uh, pickup socket for a turntable so it's got all the bases covered hasn't it um, so a quick power up reveals it is actually working um, as it is but I'm going to finish recapping this. I'm not going to leave it as is and go round the resistors as well. Just see if there's anything round. So why doesn't it work when it was put in the radio? That's a good question. Um, I guess it's going to be a dry joint somewhere. That that seems to be the logical explanation. I also had this uh, this battery holder in which someone's repaired. I think I put a PP9 clip with it. Perhaps that was the idea I had. Some of the screws might still be in here, there's some nuts and bolts, but i just got to try and remember how it goes back together. So here's the top of the radio. As you can see, it's got a lid and the speaker's on the side. Um, VHF long wave, mute, on, off, volume and tone control. So it's got a mute, that's interesting. I wonder what that does. Whether it's FM into station muting, I'm not sure. But that's the uh, case on the back. Let's hope things focus. Yeah, there's your pickup tape, an earphone socket, and uh, there's an FM aerial. And here's the telescopic rod. So I guess because it sits on the table, you hinge it up like that. But that looks in good nick. There's some few dents and dinks in the case, but. What do you expect for something that was made before I was born? <laughs> and this is the uh, bottom cover, which looks like it's got a couple of clips. Looks a bit warped, doesn't it? Oh well, anyway, so to the electronics. Well, I did have a working radio. Now I've recapped it. We've got a lovely bit of crackling going on. Okay, thinking about it logically, looking at the circuit diagram, I've removed the input connections and that's why the radio is not sounding. But it's been interesting because with this volume turned up, it, it's exceedingly noisy. I don't know if you can hear that. I'll hold the speaker to you. sounds a bit like a distant thunderstorm with occasional crackles. The interesting thing is the volume control is on the input of the uh, last, uh, well, second preamp transistor. But all I can think is the action of turning the pop down is that you're moving the wiper close to ground, so it's shunting the um, base away. So I think what's in my diagram, TR6, I think has got a problem. Um, I don't know if tapping it would help. I 
but I think that transistor is noisy um, because if, if you're, as I said, if you're putting the volume control wiper down towards the ground you're shunting the base off so it tends to suggest that that transistor has got a noisy base. Oh, now it's crackling. Nice. PMP germanium transistor. Yeah, 44 height. Okay. I'm just checking the other transistor, but I just took out the noisy one just so I've got some idea of what to replace it with. Leakage half a milliamp. Well, they are like that. Very, very leaky things. Old oh, germanium transistors. So, pop this one on. It's an unmarked one, so it could be anything. I hope it's not an RF transistor because that could be embarrassing when it goes off on one. Um, Thirty-four, so that's not particularly high gain. Well, I have a new transistor in, and it's still doing it. So, makes me wonder now whether it is actually some of the biasing resistors. Mm. Aha! Just a hiss now. So, what was it? This ten k. Actually makes you wonder whether I might end up changing more resistors. Uh, might be easier if I try and um, explain in, with the aid of a circuit diagram what was happening with the noisy transistor, which turned out to be actually a noisy resistor. And that is, as we slide the volume control down to towards ground, which in this case is positive because this is germanium, that's how it works, it's, it's back to front to everything else, but as we slid the volume control down, this capacitor was actually bypassing the noise from the 10k resistor, so that's why as I turned it down the crackling and the noise got lower. This is the preamp circuitry, audio preamp circuitry for this radio. You've got the inputs from the ratio detector and the AM detector, there's a gram and it's a switch jack socket that's why the radio didn't work because I've got to bypass it my my silliness there is a tape output notice that the tape and the gram are isolated by 0.1 microfarad capacitor to ground now whether that's because it could get plugged into something that had a live chassis I'm not sure this is 65 so it's entirely possible um, the first stage is just a conventional AF stage there is bypassing on this emitter resistor and the reason is that increases the audio gain without losing um, gain in this stage because when you put an emitter resistor in it is a form of negative feedback this is the driver stage and as you can see it's driving a transformer because it's push-pull you need two antiphase signals so that's why a transformer is used in this model later radios used a transistor to generate two antiphase signals. There's a feedback input here. Power supply is interesting because the negative rail in this is basically straight to the negative but the decouple supply for the rest of the radio is actually in the positive and there's a bypass capacitor here. You can get a good idea how much current is being drawn by measuring across here in, in a radio that's got this um, RC bypass. I think that needs a bit of work on, doesn't it? Okay, so we've got the push-pull output stage here. Now, the idea is that these two transistors are partly switched on, hence class AB. And that's what this 2K2 and 100 ohm, and there's a 2K2 and 100 ohm here. The way these are biased on varies in radio. Sometimes they use diodes, sometimes they use um, completely separate bias, sometimes there's a thermistor in there to compensate, especially if it's germanium transistors because they, they really do suffer from thermal runaway. Anyway, so the basic premise is that each of these transistors will be turned on lightly. And the reason they have to be turned on lightly is because you've got a volt drop across the base to the emitter. If you don't have bias, 
you get one heck of a lot of distortion. So each transistor has to be lightly turned on. This transformer has two tap pins on it and they're in antiphase. So what happens is, is that one audio signal is in phase and the other one isn't. So one transistor will turn on harder on the positive cycle and one transistor will turn on harder on the negative cycle. Because these are biased, normally you'll find this point here is about half the supply rail. It varies depending on um, the radio etc. So because we've got the rail here sitting at about halfway, that's why you have a blocking capacitor here to stop DC going into the speaker because um, it just operates much better without the cone being pushed out halfway plus the fact you'd be drawing a lot of current and then we would be into a class A situation again. I thought it might be easier to do, have a oscillogram on the video. You can see the drive to the two bases, you can see the antiphase and this here is the combined output on the capacitor, the coupling capacitor to the loudspeaker so you can see that each transistor is doing half half the job there. Now what we're looking at is the output of the push-pull and we're looking at the transistor side of the output coupling capacitor. I have two volts per division and we've got a nine volt supply rail so it will be slightly off the bottom but you can see at the moment that the DC is sitting halfway. As I start to turn up the input you can see it's swinging back towards naught and then up to the supply rail and if you turn it up enough you'll see it starts to clip it's a bit hard to see but you can see there's a flattening there so it's not completely balanced but uh, that is um, basically what's going on with the push-pull so that's what the coupling capacitor is there to obviously block that DC because we're only interested in the audio signal we don't want DC in the speaker. Let's look at the RF section of this set underneath this metal can is the FM tuner head there's an RF amplifier transistor and then an oscillator mixer transistor which are located under this cover with the tuning capacitor that's the oscillator coil for the AM bands and that's the first IF um, can for the FM band. This transistor T3 is dual, has dual function in this. It's switched to either be the oscillator mixer for medium wave in conjunction with the ferret rod or it's switched to become the first IF amplifier for the FM band. So dual use there but you think I bet I bet RF transistors cost a damn fortune in 1965. I bet they weren't cheap because you know it wasn't till the 60s that transistors started to be workable on shortwave let alone the VHF bands anyway so it's got two dual cans here so the IF is doing the 472 and the 10.7 on these two cans and then this final can is the AM detector with associated diode and this is the FM discriminator with a pair of diodes there's a balancing pot here this is a ratio detector so I guess I shall be checking voltages and checking balance when I go through the um, alignment procedure. FM sounds a little bit harsh to me so it might well be the discriminator is a little bit out of kilter. Basically the 10.7 alignment calls me to inject where the base is <clears throat> on transistor 2 which is the mix and I believe that is the right point. I don't really fancy taking that tin bit off and damaging the tracks because it looks like somebody's already had a good hack at that. Um, then it just describes uh, peaking T7, T6 and T5 uh, which is the discriminator and all back to the IF and also there's a, a uh, series tuned circuit in the emitter of T2 which you've got to um, peak for minimum 10.7 but I don't know, having this on it makes you wonder if it damps things doesn't it, but there we go. I might have a go at adjusting the ratio detector with the way I've done it before, where you put a voltmeter on it and actually uh, zero in it and then checking it for linearity, but this doesn't even call for that, it just says peak everything and then adjust for maximum AM reduction on the balance 
uh, uh, adjuster on the ratio detector but uh, anyway I'm gonna get on with this well I've just about done the FM alignment this trap and all the IFs do seem a little bit out I've more than doubled the audio output more than doubled so anyway I've almost done I just got to set this AM rejection so it calls for 22 um, kilohertz deviation uh, for the tone so uh, right so uh, this is the balance and I've now got AM modulation you can see the voltmeter this is very sensitive so ooh, they are and there's the null you can very difficult to find the null point I think it's about there. Very, very difficult to find the null point because the readings seem to be changed. It might be better if I increase the signal. So we've got something a little bit higher. Although me moving my arms around is moving everything all over the place. How interesting. Yes, so you definitely need a decent amount of signal to get this null point. There it is. We've definitely got a defined null point now. I just need to turn the signal up a little bit. Which is, I suspect, I wonder if that's because you need to have the limiter working. But yeah, we've got a definite null there. Excellent. So there we go. That's the null point. So it's rejecting AM. So of course AM, the reason for AM rejection is to reject impulse interference, you know, car ignition, people turning light switches on, etc. So that's what that's there for. So yeah, we've got a nice good null now. Let's turn that irritating noise down. What I've done is this is an unbalanced ratio detector. So what I've done is I've put two 47k resistors in series, temporary across the output of the diode, and that's my one connection, and the other connection to the meter is to the audio frequency takeoff path. So now we can do a balanced measurement. So if I go 10.8, we have 43. If I go 10.6, we have minus 50. So it's not absolutely linear but it's pretty good so my best option would to just keep me adjusting it I found out it's the secondary is this top one so perhaps if I oh it's so difficult isn't it so just to make it a little clearer what I'm doing I've put two temporary 47k resistors across the diode that's one of my points and then the other point I'm taking off the takeoff point it should really go there but high impedance resistance meter doesn't really make a lot of odds so it's just I can clip onto that a lot easier and uh, that's how I'm getting my plus and minus reading I think that's about as best I'm going to get it I know it's not linear but I suspect the only way to get them to read more accurately is to swap out the diodes for a new balance pair they may well have come a adrift with time but uh, anyway this is the output of the discriminator as it is now as you can see it's not very symmetrical at all is it it's uh, very much going downwards but not so much upwards it's about 50% more uh, well 40% more so uh, not good I thought I'd test the um, diodes in the ratio detector they should be matched right let's have a look Diode, yep. Yeah. Forward voltage 1.279. And now I'll just test the other diode in the ratio detector. No, 
0.615. Well, they need to be balanced. That is definitely not balanced. Um, so there's obviously an issue here. That's probably why I couldn't get the symmetry yesterday when I tried to set the ratio detector. Oh, so the OA79s actually came in a matched pair. Um, yeah, need to go back in time to get some. Well, I've got the uh, new uh, pair of diodes in. I managed to find a pair that were the same out of a scrap radio, so that's done. Now we can see that the um, we can see that the balance is out again. So I'll just correct that. I think I'd been better off if I'd injected it further down into the receiver. But I've had another go at the 10.7 cores, so let's have a look now. 10.8 is now 90. 10.6 is now 75. That's a lot closer than I was previously, so that is better. And it just shows the effect of uh, tuning the 10.7 cores as well. I think I've been better off injecting the signal closer to the ratio detector. Okay, so what I've done is I've um, introduced the signal into the final stage with a bit of coupling, um, which is hard to see because it's off camera, but there we go, I'll just move it in. Yeah, I've just cut, capacitively coupled it into the final stage. Now let's see how linear it looks. Uh, 143, down to 10.6. 132 that's pretty good okay so here we are looking at the discriminator again and as you can see it looks uh, one hell of a lot more symmetrical than the previous with the previous diodes in so that's good news so I think that should sound a lot lot better now Despite looking all over the plate, I cannot find the replacement plate, so somebody's made me a plate here. Although the slots are a bit big, so I'm going to have to get around that. I need to drill two holes here and put a piece of string through which holds the dial in. Um, as for the radio, I've done the AM part. Basically, it's the same old story. Do the IFs. On medium wave, peak the two trimmers, adjust the medium wave coil, because that was quite out on here. So I've peaked it properly now. Um, and long wave, there's two adjusters here, and they would happen to have nuts on. And of course, I've only got a metal tool with nuts on, which made it very difficult to adjust, because obviously uh, the metal tool affected the capacitance of it. But um, yeah, I'm getting there. I've had a play with this now trying to do an S curve on it instead of just using the normal swing the uh, voltage on the ratio detector um, so I think I should probably leave leave that now as it is um, long waves very good on it's very sensitive and it seems very immune to interference I noticed there's a car input which is not used on my one and uh, I really should have fixed that one down really because it keeps moving around. I don't think it's going to have much effect on the coupling, but I've got another piece of uh, rubber belt I'll jam in it. Um, so yeah, that's about it really. It's difficult because this scale also contained markings, so I had to keep sticking it back in the case to find out where the whereabouts on the wave band I am when I'm aligning it. So that's been a bit of a pain as well. But there we go, that will teach me for losing the uh, piece of metal. I've got a horrible feeling that it's it's ended up somewhere and ended up from being thrown away because it was thought it was off a piece of scrap ra radio. But that's the problem, you know, when you put a project away, we put the bits with it. Yes, Darren. I still cannot find the metal bit to go here, so had to go here at making a replacement. It's antique white, not pure white, but... Maybe it adds to the effect, but it does seem to work okay. So you get so far with a radio and you think, well, it's all right, but you sit there and listen to it for a while and you think, I'm not sure about this and I am not sure about this radio. Now, things that bother me is the fact this that uh, there doesn't seem to be enough audio gain. 
I expect when I turn this volume control full up that I can drive the output stage into clipping, but I don't seem to be able to, so I'm just going to do a little bit more investigation. It might be because I'm using an 8 ohm test speaker, which is a bit naughty because this is designed for 16, but uh, I'll have to have to think my way around it. Um, but I'm going to do some more tests. I think the easiest thing is is to insert a tone here and I'm going to have a look at the output stages and just see if there's anything that I'm not sure about but you know I don't want to put this red ear back together and then not be happy with it. Just looking at the output of the first collect of the uh, first preamp uh, transistor which is the OC71 and uh, it's clipping quite easily as you can see there isn't enough swing and I've just looked at the voltage chart if I got it right there should be 0.7 volts across the 3k3 um, I've got less than half that so that's why that's clipping the transistor isn't switched on hard enough you can see from the emitter resistor so I'm gonna have a look at the 180k okay the uh, transistor is conducting a bit harder now I've replaced the gone high bias resistor but it's still clipping quite early but the uh, voltage across the load resistor on the collector is still not what it should be so right well I put that transistor I found in at the beginning of this video and uh, well look at that we've got proper current now that's so much better <sighs> that must be the source of the distortion I could hear earlier um, it seemed to depend on the volume as well which was a bit strange but uh, certainly we've got a lot more gain now because that was the other question as well it seemed that uh, you couldn't turn the radio up loud enough but uh, just looking at the output stage that's an improvement but uh, just to make things easy to understand I've, um, I'm looking at the DC output now it is balancing at about 4.73 volts on a 9 volt supply so it's a little bit upwards but if we just move it to the onwards of clipping you can see I'm just clipping at the 9 volts here but I'm not coming below 3 volts here um, I don't really think that's right and I don't honestly think that sine wave looks particularly right so either there's a problem with the driver transformer which I think is unlikely or I think these transistors are no longer matched and they might not be after all this time so uh, <sighs> Have I got any more AC128s left, I ask myself, maybe. But, uh, yeah, the output transistors, I'm trying to think what they were now. I've completely forgotten because I think they were OC781s, weren't they? Yes. That's right, OC81. So, uh, just not balancing, I don't think. I'm going to check the resistors as well because um, they might have got out of balance, but I thought I'd already done that. Well, I've changed the bias resistors, so they're all matched now within, look like about a percentage, so it still doesn't look symmetrical. I had a rummage around and I found some 2SB324 transistors, I think they're Japanese, um, but uh, I've put those in and now it sits exactly at half rail is where it should be instead of being more like 4.7 it's now 4.5 and I've got a little bit more dynamic range now I'm, I couldn't really get much below 3 but now I can get below 2 volts so uh, that's good so that's an improvement just looking at the circuit diagrams for clarity that's the first preamp uh, transistor I changed what was happening is there wasn't enough voltage across this 3k3 that's why we're getting uh, clipping so uh, with a new transistor, as I said, the 180K made very little difference. Um, it's just not biasing on like it should do. There isn't a lot of bias there. It's quite starved as it is. So that's not quite so good. Okay, just looking at the output stage um, again. Um, I ended up uh, replacing all these bias resistors. Let's get it in screen. So these bias resistors are all changed but didn't really help much so it was the two output transistors. Well it's strange this radio now. It's only got this, this is the only original transistor left in it now. Someone already changed some of these for AF126s. I reckon it's been repaired in the past. 
I don't know I don't remember doing it myself but uh, someone else had so this OC81 is the only original one that's a replacement because we were um, getting a distorted output from this first output stage because there wasn't enough wasn't biased enough here's the two new transistors in the output stage now put the heatsink back on now here's the um, old output transistors. I'm getting some very strange readings from these. Hyph 273, really? A little bit leaky. Not that much. It's not much different to the replacement ones. Let's try this other one. Just see what bizarre readings I get from this one. Here we go. Hundred and eighteen, that's still a bit bizarre, so uh there we go. Um odd, so anyway they're no good. Oh while well, I was looking for bits I found for Mr for my field fair Ferguson. Huh. Oh, well I'll put that in sometime. I've got a moment. Anyway, I'm gonna have a listen to the radio and see if it does sound better now we've done all these improvements um to the output stage and to the preamp. Well, here you go. It's getting a little closer. Oh, there we go. Look, right, fill the frame up. Anyway, there you go. This is the radio together. I think I've put these in the wrong place, but never mind. I'm supposed to use them to pull the batteries out. Well, I think you can actually. Very strange. Rather than use the two pin thing that come with it, which went in there, I've put a PP9 on. I was wondering about seeing if I could get a uh, make an adapter that fits in here that would uh, hold a PP9 instead, because I don't like these batteries bare in here because I don't know I seem to like PP9s more because they've got a double sheath um, so if you do get a leak they're less likely to uh, cause a problem anything else of note yes I had to twig the AMIF slightly on the first one now on the first IF and uh, I'm still wondering about this disconnect the ferret rod and put a signal in that was used for this one haven't seen it make another radio go completely haywire I think it'd be better to leave the ferret rod connected and um, capacitive couple some input in I know the ferret rod is gonna short out a lot of it but you can always turn the signal generator up so yeah anyway so that's what it looks like when it's together here's the cables to the inputs and outputs um, I've had to put a jack plug in one on and off a couple of times just to get it going. Obviously bad connection. Um, there's the earth which goes to the aerial socket and also this bit of metal here so it acts as a ground plane which is good. Right. Now all the batteries are going to fall out aren't they? Oh, I must admit the lid is a bit awkward. I mean, suppose all the batteries are just falling out. Ah! I'm sure there must have been something to clip this in properly. I'm going to have to have a look a bit more, but I think they'll hold the batteries in this time and stop them falling out. Um, there we go. I think something like this would do better to have a... Uh, oh, I love these things. Oop, there we go. Right, fingers crossed. Ow! I've jammed my finger in this lid about five times now. Ow! Right, there we go. Right. So I actually asked him, and he said yes, it's fine. Um. Um, people are... <laughs> We've been discovering loads of new...
Well, that's the Decker Diadem. It's an interesting looking radio with the speaker at the end and a sort of table mounting and its lid. Not quite sure where it was aimed at, but it is a nice looking thing. I suppose it could have been stereo. <laughs> if stereo was uh, readily uh, available then. But uh, yeah, it's a nice radio. It's a pity I lost the tuning scale, but the substitute one sort of works. It's not perfect. Perhaps reinvestigate that if I ever find the uh, where the other tuning scale has disappeared to. It's gone somewhere. I just don't don't know where. But uh, there we go. That's a pain in the neck, really, to be honest. I've never completely replaced so many components in a radio before. Um, there's only one original transistor left in this thing now. Um, but there you go. I I guess um, germanium technology is now. You know, this is this is. Um, over 50 years old so uh, you know uh, the transistors were never designed to last that length of time were they so uh, never mind anyway thanks for watching hope you found that one interesting and uh, I'll see you soon